you know, this is going to be a time where your generation is going to help shape the future. I just want to say welcome first. It's great to have you here. And this is actually our fifth virtual installment of Pizza and Politics. Unfortunately, there is no pizza today, but we just wanted to start off and ask, how do you feel about pineapple pizza? Mm, I'm, I'm, not, I know, I'm not sure I can go with pineapple pizza. I feel like my cousin who visited from Montana had pizza with Canadian ham and uh, pineapple on it. I was, I was not okay with that. I'm a little more of a traditionalist. Just to start off with our first question, can you please introduce yourself and talk a little bit about what inspired you to run for New York City Mayor? Thank you and thank you for having me. I'm Catherine Garcia. I am running for New York City Mayor because the city is in crisis and really needs someone who understands how government works, how frontline folks work, how you plow snow, how you deliver water, how you pick up garbage. Uh, these are the really essential parts of municipal government. You know, we need kids to be in school uh, and we need people to feel safe in their communities. But also having a larger vision for how we invest to protect the climate, even during a pandemic, because it's not going away. So looking more at your government and public service experience, what have you learned from your time working for the city of New York? Oh, that is a great question. Um, you are able to touch so many people's lives every day when you work in New York City government because it is about day-to-day -day service. And there's so many smart people uh, who are so committed to making sure that people have a better day, whether or not that's an engineer figuring out how we're gonna redirect water uh, or how we're gonna replace a valve that's a hundred years old and no one makes these anymore. They actually do know how to make, um, they stitch metal because none of the parts of the system are still manufactured today. From the sanitation workers who are now out on 12 hour shifts, making it happen, plowing the snow. Uh, it is a wonderful place to work and attracts so many people who are so smart and a joy to work with every day. What would you say is the most rewarding part of public service and vice versa? What would you say is the most challenging part? Uh, well, the public is always the most challenging and the most rewarding. Uh, you know, when you do the types of jobs that you do as someone in government, as a government leader, uh, the public does not want to praise you. It, you're not going to be written up as like person of the year in Time Magazine. You did your job and there should be no ego about that and no uh, real pats on the back, so to say. That's what you get paid to do. Um, and in some ways, government should be invisible to people. It should just work. It shouldn't be something you have to think about. Uh, but the most rewarding is when you are seeing people's lives change. When you go out, so during the pandemic, we created a system to deliver 130 million meals. And actually the schools did deliver some pizza um, as part of their, as part of their uh, menu, which I think ended up being very popular. Uh, I'm not sure it was the best pizza, but it was still popular. Um, and you saw that people who would have been hungry were not hungry. That is just, you just feel like, oh, I made a difference today. I got up and this made people's lives better. That is what government service is really about. Um, and for the record, New York pizza is the best kind of pizza. Um, but it's what in your the opinion- water. It's how you get the crispy crust. What in your opinion is the biggest misconce misconception about how politics works in general? Oh, I mean, I may be, the least able to answer this question. Uh, you know, politics has the ability to galvanize people together to make real change. And I actually think that folks understand that. Uh, but I think what they don't understand is how important every voice is, that politics is really the people going to the voting booth and making a difference. Uh, one of the challenges in New York City is the last open primary in 2013, less than 700,000 people voted in a city of 8.6 million. And so getting engagement, I think the, the real sad thing that people think about politics is it's they, their participation isn't important. 
and their participation is incredibly important. Just to shift gears a little bit uh, towards your campaign, what are some of the most important or valuable policies that your campaign is currently prioritizing? We have a lot of policies and you can always go on the website and check all of them out at kgfornyc.com. But reopening the economy is absolutely critical, particularly art and culture and restaurants, which makes New York City sort of the city that it is. Uh, Pre-pandemic, we ate 40% of our food in a restaurant or in a cafe or out of our houses uh, because we are, I've decided, perhaps the most social city in the entire world. Uh, having to get that sector that makes us special, critically important. But when we open up the economy, we have to ensure that there's economic mobility for all and that we are thinking about education in a different way and connecting kids coming out of CUNY to internships and really good first jobs, whether in the public or private sector, but also out of our trade schools. You know, as sanitation commissioner, I had trouble hiring an auto mechanic. They make a lot of money. Um, but there, we have an automotive high school. I wasn't able to directly recruit for those jobs. Um, and that means that they weren't prepared to ha- manage a sanitation truck. Uh, we need to ensure that there are direct connections to jobs that we were going to need in the 21st century. We know that technology is expanding. We know that film and media is expanding in the city. Healthcare is still expanding in the city and finance is still expanding in the city. So are our young people ready for those jobs? We need to make sure that happens. So recently there has been a focus on race-based injustices and violations of rights. How do you take steps to advocate for protection of rights of indigenous peoples and people of color? And how are you incorporating that into your campaign? So I come from a a multiracial family because I was adopted and my brother was adopted. Uh, Black Lives Matter, my brother's life matters, Matthew. Uh, I know what the difference is between when I walk in to a store by myself and when I walk in with him and the change in the implicit bias that happened. So it's not only about protecting rights with PD, but having this conversation more broadly. But in terms of PD specifically, they have to become guardians of all communities, which means intensifying community policing and ensuring that they are talking to the leaders of the community, whether those are faith-based leaders or other civic organizations. But we can't do that outside of context where we hold bad cops rigidly responsible for what they do. Uh, You know, if I was sanitation commissioner, if you put a black bag from a restaurant in a white truck, you got fired. Uh, It's like, that was the rules. And we have not held PD accountable in the same way because if we don't hold them accountable, then you can't actually celebrate cops who do the right thing. And holding it and making sure that we're managing to what we want. You don't get promoted unless you are doing and walking the walk and talking the talk about community engagement. But on two practical fronts, I would increase the age of new recruits to 25. 21 is awfully young to give someone a badge and a gun and say, go protect and serve. And I would require them to live within the city. I know that requires state legislation, but I think it's really important that they are integrated into our communities and part of them. What advice would you give young people like us in State of the Students who are interested in politics and social justice going forward? Oh, so you, all young people these days are super drivers of what policies we're looking at and you are shaping them. And so my recommendation is organize, get involved with your Democratic clubs or your Republican clubs, but uh, I'd recommend the Democratic clubs. Uh, Reach out to your local electeds uh, and talk to them. They are often extremely open to meeting with uh, groups of students and want that engagement. Uh, If there are things that you're really passionate about, if that's the environment or racial justice, there are tons of organizations to be involved with. And I would, I would be part of that. Um, We really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to talk with us today. Why do you think students should take time out of their busy schedules to learn about the government? Well, because the reason that young people should learn about the government is it impacts your life. Uh, 
particularly at the city level? You know, what's your education look like? You know, how many teachers do you end up having in your classrooms? Uh, do you have art and music in your high schools? How many classes are available to people in CUNY? Can you get your degree in four years? Are those courses available to you? Um, so it matters to your life uh, what services you have. But beyond that, how we grow and develop this economy is where your future career will be. Uh, and you want to ensure that the city's paying attention to that so that you have a full life here in the city of New York and not to make anyone crazy, that you can grow and have children and uh, you know, be able to raise them in the city. That sort of thing makes my son totally nuts when I say anything like you will have a child or get married or anything like that. <laughs> What sets you apart from other mayoral candidates and why are you the best candidate for your young people? I have the most experience on what the mayor's job actually is. It's not about press conferences. It's not about making a plan to a plan to a plan. It's about executing and getting the work done. And I have proved over and over again that I can do that. I understand how to make it happen whether or not it was delivering food for people during COVID when I delivered 130 million meals from March to September or doing sanitation or running our water supply system. I know what it takes to actually do the day-to-day -day work. Um, and people in, in children in particular, young, young adults, uh, want someone who understands the future and is really focused on climate change and protecting your future uh, from the effects of wind or snow or heat or storm surge so that this city uh, lasts for another 400 years because our 400th anniversary is coming up. How do you hope to get kids more actively involved in politics if you become mayor? Well, I, my, my feeling is you've got to engage them where they are. Uh, it's partly about talking to them. Their issues are not going to necessarily be the issues of their parents. Uh, and they they are coming at it from a very uh, you've had a very different life experience, uh, particularly in the last four years than those of us who are older. Uh, but really having meetings with people and making it so that they feel like it matters, that if they come to government and bring an issue to government, that something changes and we don't just sort of pat you on your head and say, that was so sweet of you to say that, uh, not helpful. Um, engaging with young people is about also empowering young people to make the change.